resistance is futile. Boldly going where no show has gone before. This is The Week in Geek with David D. Squared and Brian Held. Heard live on News Talk 99.5 WRNO and the iHeartRadio app. Here are your hosts, Brian Held and D Squared. Greetings, people of Earth. This is The Week in Geek, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now. I'm your host, D Squared, along with Brian Held. Brian Held. How are you, Buckaroo? Uh, sadly to report, I think I finally succumbed to the con crowd of Wizard World. Ah, it's about time. That's what you get for making out with strangers. What? <laughs> what? No. <laughs> no, okay. I don't know. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> oh, man. Um, just uh, getting ready for Mardi Gras, man. Uh, Chewbacca is going to be here before we know it. Uh, unreal, man. Yes. Unreal. So, all right. Well, let's lay out the show real quick. All right. Uh, well, we're going to start with Top Nerd News. And, and then, then we're going to have an encore presentation of, of more, Top Nerd News. <laughs> right. And then, of course, we'll have our boy Scungy and his pick of the week. And then we'll close it all out with This Week in Geek History. But first... Top nerd news stories from around the world, brought to you by the Viridian Tea Company. Find them on Etsy. And now, your top nerd news stories. All right, Mr. Held, what's topping us off tonight? Well, you're a fan of, of history, right, Dave? I am. So, apparently, 1917 has dethroned the rise of Skywalker at the box nice! office this weekend. Dude, yes. I, I've been wanting to go see it. I just, I've had zero time. We got the national championship in town and just playoffs, and it's been nuts uh, yeah. for, a spa- for us sports ball people. Right, right. But, uh, so, yeah, rise of Skywalker... It is approaching a billion dollars. Uh, one billion. <laughs> right. But however, <laughs> it's weird because I'm seeing a lot of talk about how it's it's underperforming, which is crazy. A, a billion dollars is underperforming? R- right, right. Well, you know, I, I also think Galaxy's Edge is underperforming. That's why that dude got fired and or quit, whichever. R- yeah. I mean, look, when you, when you make a billion dollar gift shop, you know, apparently somebody's going to lose their job. But no, yeah. the, as far as the movie goes... I mean, look, I've been talking to people about it, you know, now that you can have some uh, spoilery conversations with people. And I mean, most people that I know that aren't like uber nerds like us, you know, that that are are, are Star Wars fans, they love the movies. Yeah. I mean, you know, so I I think maybe we and a lot of our listeners and people that check out the show and the podcast and everything that like us on Facebook, maybe we just have a higher standards or we expect more or maybe... Uh, I mean, maybe you said you feel kind of jaded or over, uh, just just kind of blasé about it now. Like yeah, I've got fatigue. That's the word. You're I am. Using. I am fatigued when it comes to Star Wars. Yeah, I and I just when I look at Rise of Skywalker, I just the more I think about it, the less that I look at it as an actual movie. What? Well, it, okay. hear me Explain. out. Explain. Well, Explain as you would a child. <laughs> I think it was most apt, the the quote that I saw, that Rise of Skywalker seems like a seven-year-old saw a movie and then explained it to you, right? It, okay. As far as you're getting so much so fast with this thing that it's not a complete narrative. Like someone who had no idea, has never seen one of these movies before, would watch it and be like, I'm not sure what I saw. And 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 I think that plays more into the idea that you need to consume all of the Star Wars, the books, the novels, the comics, everything, in order to kind of understand. And to point, I keep seeing references to this Star Wars visual dictionary that – like details, yeah, right? Right. Like if you think about the scene with uh, Palpatine on uh, Exegol, and there's all those people in those stands. Like right. f- from what was presented in the movie, we have no idea who those people are. Those are all the past Sith, Sith lords because he's already made mention that you will now become one of me. So she would well, Ray would become a spectator. Those are all cultists, right? Those are all former Sith lords. No, they're cultists. I it, thought they were Sith Lords. They, no. they weren't real people. They disappeared. They were made of smoke. No, they, they were actual people. They were cultists. And they are the people who raised children who are now manning those Star Destroyers that you see rise up. Right? You are crapping me. No. So, I, wait, how did you find this information? From the visual dictionary that was produced that has all of this additional information. Okay, now uh, I'm pissed. Now, now you understand. Now we're kind of on the same page, right? That I you, don't want to believe you, but... 
I, I kind of believe you, but I don't believe you. I, I, well, I, can, I can show you. Fine. Uh, you know, this stuff. This stupid visual dictionary. And, and how much do you have to pay for said visual oh, dictionary? I, I, I have no idea. Or can we just Google it? Well, I mean, you can find news articles about the, the visual dictionary that's going to give you some information, but if you want all of it. The way the, way the movie kind of it sort of explained it was that those were like the ghosts of Christmas past, you know, nope. Sith Lords. Nope. So those were real flesh and blood people? Yes. Right. Ah. Wait, wait, how do they eat? Uh, I mean, Jesus, where do they all go to the bathroom? Apparently. I mean, do they have hydroponic farms on all the Star Destroyers? Is, is everybody the Smith? Swiss Family Robinson, but in Star Destroyers? Look, as Danger, a, Will Palpatine. Danger, Will. Danger, Sheev. Danger. C- clearly, <laughs> as was presented from the context of the movie, Exegol's chief export is lightning, and so maybe they <laughs> subside off of, you know, electricity. I, I, I'm just a poor lightning <laughs> farmer trying to make my way. I was going to go to Tashi Station to get some power converter. <laughs> right. So and that was uh, that was one of the biggest things where you know Palpatine used his the force to to make all of those star destroyers rise out of the ground or water or wherever and then they're fully manned like where did all these people come from well like, that that really was my biggest question after I'm like where do these people come from I thought they were just first order transfers like you know just no that's a whole because new it, cause, well, because cult. the guy who shot uh, the, the 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 redhead dude you know I'm just like like he was in charge out there as the first order and then came back to man one of the other star destroyers back there at you know you're talking about Hux no yeah well Hux is the one who got shot but right. the, the the cooler guy who was killing Hux those were I believe all those people were first order so hey, look once again, you, now now you're starting to, to see where I'm coming from. Is they're like uh, the the stormtrooper refugees that were on the plane with the horses, right? Right. I believe that the lady who's who has lines, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. Lando Calrissian's daughter? Oh, really? Yeah, and that's uh-huh. based off of information from the Visual Dictionary. So, I mean, there's like all of this additional information that you have no idea, and so it makes things confusing when you're trying to see it. Right? right, and once again, I I personally don't want to take anything away from anyone's enjoyment. I hope people enjoy the movie, but for me, it was it was mind numbing. I was like, ah, I, 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 if I got if I got to read uh, uh, anything before going to watch a movie, and you know, I'm not like I'm anti reading, but if I have to read a pamphlet or look at a visual dictionary before and after watching a movie to get context, well, then you're making a crappy movie. Exactly, and right. that's my ultimate point, which leads into, if we want to jump here, is the new movies that are coming out that are supposed to uh, be set in the High Republic era, and the rumor is that there's a video game that's coming out, uh, some luminous project, and that is going to, to set the tone for these new movies that are coming out, and it's like, well, you've just alienated half your audience, because, yeah. I mean, there are a lot of people who play video games, granted, but... I say the average moviegoer is probably not interested in playing a Star Wars video game to understand what they're seeing on the no, screen. No, right. perfect example. My boy Chris Gordy, who's over here to cover the national championship. Right. He he went and saw the movie. I went on his show and we talked a a, a spoiler free version of it. But he is the casual Star Wars fan. He, right. do, he doesn't have time to play video games. Not that he looks down on him. He just doesn't have the time. Right. So a lot of adults and parents. I don't even know how the hell I find the time to do the things I do. Right. So yeah, that's that's horse crap. Exactly. It's it's poor storytelling. Each, you know, I understand that... It's financial storytelling. Uh, I mean, because they're acknowledging that they're not giving you the whole story, though. So in this case, I think it's like a bad product. It's like, hey, we're going to give you half a game, and you can get free downloads and patches and updates for it. Are you suggesting that the movie industry now has DLC? I am, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I think I am. Wow. I mean, I, think about it. Just stop and think about it for a second. That's yeah. exactly what it is. Right. I mean, if you want to learn more, if you want to dig into more details about this, for forty nine ninety nine, you can get this handy visual dictionary. Would you like to know more? I'd like to know more. <laughs> huh, so, yeah, uh, that's, that's what concerns me so much about Star Wars right now is... It, I just I don't want to invest that much time in it anymore. And if that's how they're going to give it to me, then I just I don't care. Right. I, I, there's other I, things. I'm not going to go to that extreme, but I, I get where you're coming from. I, I share your your anger, yeah. um, but I, I, I don't I don't share your ah, screw them. It, which normally that would be me going, yeah, bleep them right in the bleep. Yeah, no, I just there's other things that I'm focused on right now. But while we're talking about Star Wars, of course, uh, we're hearing rumors about the new Disney Plus series for Obi Wan. <gasps> Misa heard them too. Yes, that Jar Jar Binks will be returning. What your thoughts? Um, all right. First off, uh, 
when I saw that, I immediately thought of my 13 year old son who was apparently very gung ho for Obi Wan. Yeah. Uh, when I said, "All right, son, you're going to get Jar Jar with that," he's like, "Um, yay!" <laughs> so he's a little uh, kind of wary now too. But you and I have discussed this. I think like two months ago on this show, where it's like, "What are they going to do? It's going to be like you know, Dune Police or something? Like it's going to he's policing the Dones, fighting crate dragons, and breaking up you know domestic d- disputes between Tuscan Raiders." You know, or, or maybe it's going to be a documentary about the plights of moisture farmers on Could Tatooine. Be. Right, right. He's, he's going to go take up the mantle for, you know, equal representation for all droid farmers. You know, and, and I I actually showed someone this recently. If I don't know if you remember the Troops fan film. <laughs> oh, yeah, film. no, that's the greatest thing that's ever happened. Maybe maybe that's what they need to do, right? Is, yeah, but then then you would be upset because it's too campy and, and too funny, and I, I like my serious stuff. You know. But I, what, what I will say to this, though, they've already kind of – it said in the movies what he did, and they showed it in Revenge of the Sith at the end. He drops off Luke. Here, have a kid that's not really yours. It's tangentially related to you. Have fun. Got a roll. So does he go back out and just sow his space royal oats? Obi-Wan's just got to get it all out of the system before his <laughs> self-imposed, you know. Um, hermitude. Hermitude. Right. Great word. <laughs> I mean, wait. he's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, forty days and forty nights in the desert, man. I really got to find some Twilight chicks and just, you know, get it out of my system. Yeah, look, I, I, not only do I not know, I, I really don't care, right? I mean, do, do we need to have the explanation of the period between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope explained from Obi Wan's point of view? Mm-hmm. Does it really matter? Well, maybe, maybe. Jar Jar shows up to pull him out of his, uh, out of whatever bar he's been a stumble <laughs> bum at. Mister, so- remember me, Obi Wan? Did you come back at Tatooine? And then he does like a Scrooge McDuck and dives into the sand, and he goes up and down and spits out sand like Scrooge McDuck in the in the vault. It'd be you, great. You know what that reminds me of <laughs> is there was a shelved project called Star Wars Detours. Do you remember anything about that? Vaguely, but no. And With uh, Seth Green was working on that under the direction of George Lucas. This was right before the point of sale of Lucasfilm okay. to Disney, and it was basically a very irreverent look at all the characters. It was animated, right? So right? it was, it was because that was when he was really rock and roll the robot chicken, huh? Y- well, yeah, exactly. And the robot chicken Star Wars stuff is the best. <laughs> it is, it is, and so they, it was really <laughs> tongue in cheek. But I mean. George Lucas himself said on stage, I was at the panel mm. where he said, here's the line and I want you way over it right. as far as the irreverence to, to Star Wars. And I think Gary that- here never gets to see his daughter because of rebels <laughs> like you. Yeah, daddy. Well, and, and Obi-Wan is featured in it and he's kind of like a, a charlatan type deal. <laughs> you and see that? Well, you know, this is not the dice you're looking for. I mean, uh, he, could, he, he could just he could be a total like like. I don't know, J- Jabba could have been his puppet. Right. Well, you, what's, uh, I was going to mention the fact that you can go on YouTube and find those little trailers for Star Wars Detours. Yeah, they're still out there. It, they're right. they're pretty they're pretty ridiculous. Well, good. Maybe we'll need that. <sighs> but yeah, I, wh- wh- what would Jar Jar be doing in this? I mean, unless they come back and full on just say that he's a Sith Lord and and Obi and and Jar Jar duke it out in the desert. So I might sign up for that. He is, Jar Jar is in one of the Aftermath novels, I believe this is canon, right, where he essentially is a clown on the streets of Naboo. Yeah, he's a French Quarter street performer. Right, and people spit on him and stuff because of- Damn, that's not nice. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, the kids don't mind, like, they'll interact with him, but, like, the adults are like, you know- Nobody spits on the gold, you know, Saints players that are, like, just sit there for hours on end on Bourbon Street, just stare off into the sunset. Yeah, but those Saints players didn't help elect a you know a global or a palace. universal dictator, <laughs> dictator. <laughs> right? I you know I don't know I, I I just have no idea what this is going to be. I after the solo debacle, I mean you look go go new go new. But I mean I don't know I I don't want to believe what you're saying, but I don't know. You you might be right because uh, if I got to read. And buy stuff and play the video games to get the whole context of a movie or a show. Well, that that's 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 a deal breaker, man. How much of a fan are you, Dave? Apparently, not much of one. No, I mean, <laughs> I probably would. I mean, it would overcome my cheapness. Yeah. I mean, so it, it is saying a lot, right? I would probably spend the money. I just wouldn't be happy doing. It. I would complain about it the whole time. <laughs> right. Well, speaking of of other of crazy news. <laughs> 
is apparently the new Star Wars director, Noah Hawley, is teasing that the the new series that he's working on, the new movies, are going to be a reboot of the Abrams verse. Wait, come again? The new Star Trek movies that he's working on are okay. going to be a reboot. Okay, Star Trek. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, Sorry. Star- yes. My bad. Yeah, well, Captain Kirk. This right, is, right. Yeah, that's where so, we're at. So no Romulan garbage men? Uh, and Vulcan will still exist? The planet? But, but, you know, Spock won't be an uh, endangered species? Maybe. Because he can't he can't hook up with Uhura because then he's diluting the species. You know, he has to find a good Vulcan girl to settle down with. Look, you know, to quote the guy, he said, it's still early days. For me, it's definitely a new direction, but it's still early in terms of exactly who would be in it or what the characters would be. I don't think this is Star Trek Four to be reductive. This is a new beginning, right? Uh, you know what? I'm not offended. Go ahead and do it. Whatever. Yeah. I don't care at this point. Well, I mean, th- those three movies were not all that great. Yeah. I mean, the first one was kind of fun, but then when you stop and look back and they're fighting a Romulan garbage man and they're fighting, you know, Doctor Strange with magic blood. Oh, that eh, was terrible. You know, that was absolutely you know, terrible. Even the third one was just kind of, he was, there. It was well, there. One of the things that I find a little disappointing, to be honest, is that it seems like there's still a wall between the film and TV versions, Right, and that they don't want to bring it all together, and I, I think that's absolutely a shame. They don't have enough people like Marvel to pull it off, apparently. Right? Well, it just <laughs> oh, it's uh-huh. it's it's messy. No, I look. I, I I'm excited for Picard that comes out January 23rd. Yes. Uh, I'm. I still won't buy CBS All Access, but you know, I'll be happy for people who have CBS All Access. Are you gonna look to? You know, binge it all in a month. Well, just, then I have to watch two seasons of Star Trek and then this because I haven't watched any of it because that's how cheap I am. Maybe, maybe you can talk to Vice Admiral Randolph Allen from the USS New Orleans. I don't and, think he likes me anymore. You know, go go find a viewing somewhere. Oh, okay. If they're if they're out and about, maybe. Yeah, I don't think he likes me. Though. All right, fair okay. enough. <laughs> all right, we have to get to a break, but guys, stay tuned. More top nerd news when we get Thundercats! back. Thundercats! Thundercats! Oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> Guys, you're listening to The Week of Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. Friends, is your morning tea just not your cup of tea? Then try the tea blends of Viridian Tea Company. At Viridian Tea Company, they sell blends guaranteed to make you think outside the box. With such blends as Tea of the Necropolis, Quantum Mechanics, Spider Witch, and many more, your tea experience will be out of this world. Look for the blends at Tubby and Coo's Mid City Bookshop, located at 631 North Carrollton, or on Etsy at Viridian Tea Company. Try Viridian Tea Company today. Your taste buds will thank you. You've waited for it, and now it's here. Get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt and help support our show. These 100% cotton black t-shirts with the Week in Geek Radio Show logo are going fast. So don't wait. Go to twigradio.com and order your shirt now. Just go to twigradio.com and get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt. 15 bucks up to XL, $17 for 2X and 3X. That's twigradio.com. Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid by Nancy Hansen, is now an audiobook read for you by Brian Held. It's a tale of a young girl from Tortuga who disguises herself as a boy and bluffs her way onto a pirate ship, chasing after her one true love, only to find adventure on the high seas. Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid is available on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. Get your copy of Jezebel Johnston today. Now, back to the Week in Geek with local celebrity, Brian Held, hashtag LCBH. Here are your hosts, local celebrity, Brian Held, and uh, and that other guy, uh, what's his name again? D-squared, you jerk. I think he's a voice guy's drinking. He's yeah. constantly drinking. <laughs> he is. Welcome back into the Week in Geek, your source for geek and pop culture news. That's trending now. We continue our journey through top nerd news, Brian. There's there's a lot of it, man. Well, there is, and there's some Thundercats information. Now, you and I reported on this a while ago. We did, yes. Uh, but and and we were I was equally repulsed as I am now. And uh here's a little trailer. So you imagine I don't know, uh, really childish Japan animation? Well, I mean, like. Uh, something it, like Adventure Time or. Uh, yes, you know, Adventure things. Time is perfect. Yeah. That, that's it. So here, here's Adventure Time Thundercats. Ah, there it is. Thundera. 
Never before has there been such a beautiful, peaceful, and harmonious place in the universe. But alas... Everything explodes someday! And it exploded. Oh, hey, <laughs> looks like someone made it out of the explosion. Oh, cool. It's the Thundercats. Check them out. Well, we got Lionel, the brand new Lord of the Thundercats, and Tigra. He's got a rope with balls on it. Oh, and Santhro. He built stuff and has nunchucks. Ooh. Shitara, the fastest person in the universe. Wily Kid and Wily Cat are the kids. And Snarf, whatever he is. Anyways, the Thundercats, last survivors of their home world, off to travel the universe to... Maybe they're just gonna land right there on this random planet. <laughs> Third oh, Earth. Well. Oh, Thundertooth. It's the mutants of Plundar. They're the sworn enemies of the Thundercats and Class A jerks. Well, it Class looks like A-Jerks. the Thundercats are gonna have their hands full, so I better get out of here. Oh, what? Who am I? My name's Jaga. I was on Thundera when it blew up, so now I'm a ghost. <laughs> uh, just shoot me now. So, you know, the thing is, is as disappointing as that I think this is, mm-hmm. this is not for us, Dave. So? Well, I can still hate it. I mean, I suppose. Uh, all right, right. Let, 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 let's, let's talk. Let's talk yeah. about this real okay. quick. So when we were kids, you know, G.I. Joe, Transformers, right. Thundercats, all these cartoons, yeah, they were guided towards kids, but they weren't moronic and l- dumb looking. I yes. mean, it, it, it was like legitimate animation. You know, some of it might have been a little cheesy for its time that nobody could shoot anybody with their red and blue lasers. But, you know, you look past that because as a kid, you know, nobody's supposed to die, blah, blah, blah. Right. But they didn't dumb it down. They, you know, you can't embrace something that, to me anyway, that that looks so ridiculous and childish. Because who the hell is going to get that Thundercat tattoo when they get older, or get a you know a, a Cobra or a, a Decepticons tattoo with some of the new garbage that they put out? But they just made Thundercats into I don't know Muppet Babies. That's what they've done. It's Muppet Babies. Yeah, and I understand where you're coming from. I think it's unfortunate about the animation style, and and I been trying to think about this a lot as far as what we're seeing now from animation is very simplistic to to true you know the in the in the way that it's presented there's some reason i'm going to get to in a second i I think i know what you're getting to just some of the younger kids like that type of animation no no it's it's not that uh but what i'm trying to say is that i i'm severely disappointed that you're you're absolutely right that they're dumbing down this stuff for a, a much younger audience yeah and when we watched it 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 yes they were marketing to us clearly yes but it was good stories and very yeah, interesting it, 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 it wasn't you know it wasn't over the top ridiculous you you could be like oh my gosh is Lionel gonna make it tune in next week you right know? but <laughs> if if i get into the animation side of things real quick I think that part of it is that there's a problem when it comes to artists and that it goes all the way back to Astro Boy in the 1950s from Japan. Um, let me get there. Okay, Japanese animators at the time when they were producing Astro Boy, they were trying to meet budgetary constraints and, and the guy who did it dropped his rates so low and they got the production done and then they were like, all right, well, that's what the standard is to pay these guys. So we're going to pay them peanuts oh, to God. get all this stuff done. And it's still like that today, right? And a lot of the animation that we saw with G.I. Joe and Thundercats and all that in, in our youth yeah. was done from Japanese artists. It wasn't just American artists doing that. Right. And so nowadays, when you've got American artists that are using flash animation or whatever animation that they're using it's coming out much more simplistic because that's easier to render right and right, right. they're not expending the effort because it's too expensive so that's why we get so many cartoons and, and things like look at rick and morty right yeah. rick and morty is is very simplistic Teen and titans go exactly at least All, they have musical numbers in that r- right now it's th- dumb but i like it it's not to say that you can't have a good story with that animation style. I would never suggest that. You can. No, but it's it's like, you know, 
dress for the job you want, not the job you got. So if you want to look like a bunch of dildos as as the Thunder Kids and then show up at the, at the, the job <laughs> and be like, hi, I'm here for the job. No, you're not. Get out of here. Right. But I just... I just think it's unfortunate for today's youth that they're presenting it in such a dumbed down fashion as compared to what was available to us in our youth. And yeah, I no, I I, I appreciate the history lesson because I, I I just don't I don't get it, man. I just right. don't get it. Well, if you are really interested in Thundercats Roar, you can actually see the two part first episode Exodus. It's streaming on the the Cartoon Network app right now. So you can actually you know, see the at episode. At one point during that 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 trailer, right? It, it it took me back for a second because they had the cool horn section of the Thundercats theme song. Dun 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 dun. It, right. I'm like I'm like, I'm like oh well, there it is. I got that little tingle and then it went away. And yeah. so all right, well look uh, before we go, Scungy's calling, but we got to knock out this Birds of Prey thing. So yes. you saw the new trailer? Uh, I did. The Emancipation of One Harleen Quinzel. Yeah, something like that. Whatever the hell it is, but. Uh, it's starting to look like it's they've fleshed out the movie a bit more. Like there, there's actually going to be some storytelling, some character development, and maybe uh, more action. Who knew Warner Brothers could have writing chops? Who knew? Let's find out. Can I help you? Why, yes, yes, you can. I'm here to report a terrible crime. And what terrible crime is that? This one. Ah, oh, I told this all wrong. Quick history lesson. This all started when the Joker and I broke up. It was completely mutual. As she eats and cheese whiz enough, out of a can. And, ex- and it exploded. Ready to embrace the fierce goddess within. <laughs> it's oh so quiet. Now that I cut ties with Mr. J, I'm about to learn that a lot of people You're want me dead. All alone. And at the top of that list... Is this guy? I'm so peaceful, um... But it turns out <laughs> that wasn't the only dame in Gotham looking for emancipation. <laughs> you fall in love. <laughs> He's after all of us. The kid just robbed him. You betrayed him. You killed his BFF. <laughs> what? You are so cool. Talking on you And you're dumb enough to be building a case against him. So, unless we all want to die very unpleasant death, we're going to have to work together. Sure. Psychologically speaking, vengeance rarely brings the catharsis we hope for. Yeah. Are we ready? Is that a hyena in a bathtub? I named him Bruce after that hunky Wayne guy. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> there you go. Look. So, you know, maybe this proves that if you don't hire a company that's uh, slated to do trailers and actually get filmmakers, oh God, right, huh? then you can produce a good movie. I mean, who knew? Well, you know, look, I actually, I, I think I was concerned about just large doses of Harley Quinn and just like, like maybe it would just become obnoxious after a while. But it seems like, you know, she could pull this off and like, you know, keep you with in character because if at one moment in that movie you step out and you realize she's just doing a, a silly accent and just, you know, pretending to be Harley. Right. I think she's actually been able to like nail the character and become the character. And if, if you can do that through the whole movie, but well, hell's bells hats off to you. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm genuinely excited to see this production. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Suicide Squad. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, Bright oh, from yeah. Netflix. Uh, it, it's still on the slate. They're going to make a Bright 2, yeah. supposedly. Yeah. Based off the uh, 84% audience score from Rotten Tomatoes. I love it. I just watched it last weekend. Yeah. So, uh, I've, been, I've been watching uh, Witcher now. i got like two more episodes left, and I wrapped up uh, Lost in Space. I've been oh, catching up. I'm trying to catch up, too. Uh, I'm up on The Witcher and... Uh, a few other things yeah. I can't even remember now. All right, Scungy's coming up next. All right, guys, stay tuned. You're listening to The Weekend Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO.
Prose Productions is a leading independent publisher on the cutting edge of new pulp and genre fiction today. At Prose Productions, you'll find fiction featuring fast-paced action and adventure, larger-than-life protagonists, over-the-top characters, and tight yet extravagant plots. Prose specializes in prose books, anthologies, audiobooks, and more. Go to prose-press.com to find our monthly release schedule and more info about our great titles. Prose Productions is your first-rate publisher of new pulp fiction today. You've waited for it, and now it's here. Get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt and help support our show. These 100% cotton black t-shirts with the Week in Geek Radio Show logo are going fast. So don't wait. Go to twigradio.com and order your shirt now. Just go to twigradio.com and get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt. 15 bucks up to XL, $17 for 2X and 3X. That's twigradio.com. Matahari, Agent H-21, is a spy fiction short story anthology about the famous dancer, seductress, and spy from World War I. Matahari, Agent H-21, published by Pro Se Productions, has seven rip-roaring adventure tales about the world-famous super spy that features her battling her enemies by using any weapons at her disposal. Matahari, Agent H-21, is available for purchase in ebook and paperback formats on Amazon.com. My name is Optimus Prime, and you are listening to The Week in Geek. Autobots, transform, and roll out! Welcome back into The Week in Geek, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now. I am D-squared along with... Brian Held. Yes, I don't know why I just suddenly felt like talking like William Shatner. No. I, I have no idea. All right, it is everyone's favorite part of the show. I am not what you would call a handsome man. Scungy's Pick of the Week is brought to you by GameStop and ThinkGeek.com. Scungy's Pick of the Week. You might be an idiot savant. Woohoo! Scungy, what's shaking, bacon? No, hold on. I've been downtown basking in the glory of the college football championship happening downtown. Oh, oh so I know God. we don't normally talk about sports ball, but you know what? The other week. Brian said sports ball was a key word, so I'm talking about sports ball. Oh, nice. I'm watching sports ball. Well, well, all right, so are you going to give us another drunken rendition of Scungy's Pick of the Week? Uh, are you going to say how, the, how you love the game and you want to bear its love child? No, 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 okay, no. Cool. no. All right. Just, just because, okay, so every time I have to be around sports ball. You, you come on the drunk show drunk up. one time. <laughs> One time, I show up drunk one time, and that's what happens every time. All right, what are we talking about, Skunji? <laughs> LSU. You. Right, so L- oh, sorry. We're talking about Death Stranding. Okay. For the, the guy- PS4, which, okay. That's the Walking Dead this- with, like, uh, black, like, uh, shadow babies that, that yeah, eat your soul? shadow babies and whatnot. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, this is, okay. Death Stranding is, okay, you might think I'm drunk trying to describe this game. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a seven-year-old but, explaining something explain they've seen. <laughs> as if you would a It's child. weird, okay. Number one, this game is made by Hideo Kojima. That's why everybody Hideo lost Kojima their mind. Hideo Kojima is the gentleman who brought us the Metal Gear series. All right. So anybody who has played the Metal Gear series, which I'm a humongous fan of. Actually, Metal Gear Solid 3 is my top five games of all time. It is that good of a game. It is really good. The only snake I believe this... in is Snake Plissken. The... <laughs> Sorry. Well, believe it or not, Snake from Metal Gear is based off of Snake Plissken. Oh, that's even better. Never mind. Shutting up, sir. Continue your so, comment. So Hideo Kojima, he, was, he got away from Konami, and Sony said, hey, we're going to give you carte blanche to make a game that you want to. Whatever it, whatever it is, do whatever you want. And he absolutely did that. He went balls to the wall. I'm going to make a game. And he made Death Stranding. Okay. <laughs> wah, the best wah. way I can describe this game is it's a hiking simulator. <laughs> <laughs> hiking. Our, well, <laughs> tell me more about this exciting is, hiking simulator. Is that like Team Fortress 2 being the number one hat simulator? <laughs> It, yeah. Look, if I, I wish you could do like what you did with Team Fortress 2 with this, but you can't. All okay. right. So 
the whole premise of the game is there is a cataclysmic event that is called the Death Stranding, and America is separated. And Norman Reedus plays this character who is trying to link the East Coast all the way to the West Coast. And he does that by finding these areas and opening up this map and connecting them and putting them back on this network. Okay. It's the best way to describe it. So it's a post-apocalyptic so sort of setting? Doing that. No, it's a, it's a, it's a very apocalyptic a, a yeah, setting. Right. Everybody's dying. But he's a glorified mailman. Okay. <gasps> Ooh, I love that movie. So, yeah. What so is he, it, Kevin Costner? Yeah. yeah. He's the postman. <laughs> yeah. The postman. Exactly. With Kevin Costner, he is the postman. But he's got these... Kojima, being the way that he does, normally when you go through a game and it's like, hey, I have an inventory and I have a gun or I have a backpack or I have a, a ladder, it's in your inventory and it's hidden. Not for Kojima, no. We have to make sure that this is visually represented on your person while you're walking through the game. Okay. So every bit of your inventory is physically on your body, so you have to manage it. And, so and don't, you don't, you have a, don't you have a fetus on your back, too? You have a fetus on your front. Which oh, okay. I'm going to get to that in a second. I'm going to get to that in a second. Really disturbing. But like, so you game, have dude. to bring these medical okay. supplies to one of the other outposts. So you have to have all of those strapped to your back. And each of them weigh, you know, a certain amount of, of weight. And you have to manage that weight as you're traversing this entire area. So you have to, like, you know, you have to pull the left and right trigger to hold them up and walk through. It, it's very, very tedious is the best way to describe it. I'm, I just suddenly yeah. had an image of, uh, what is that, Katamari? What? Katamari Domashi? Yeah. Uh, no. Right, Katamari we're... Domashi is so lighthearted. This is not. No, as because far as the... If you fall down the side of a cliff, everything will fall off of you and your cargo gets damaged. And then you don't get as high of a score as you did if it wasn't undamaged. You, oh, wow. you hiked poorly. <laughs> exactly. Now, going You die of whole, dysentery. <laughs> the whole baby thing... You have this baby connected to you. There are these entities called BTs or beach things that are invisible. And if they they have this black muck, and if they see you, if you make noise or whatnot, they'll grab you and they'll bring you down into the muck and whatnot. Well, you have this baby on you that will identify them and make you see them. So you can stealthily walk around them. Mm. So now we're summoning a so quiet place. The movie. Yes. It, which is very common with the Kojima game. That is not anything new. The problem with it is, is that it, it just seems like this game, it took, I'm not even playing around, it took 10 hours for me to get to an action scene. Oh my God. Where I have to use a gun. Now the reason I'm reviewing this game is because it's been one of the most sought after games for years because Kojima is one of the most sought after directors in the video game business. Yep. I love him. I'm a huge fan of his work. And I've been like waiting with bated breath to find this new game. And, and you got hiking simulator. And I got a hiking simulator. Like Metal Gear when you play Metal Gear, you have to uh, you have to play it with a bit of, you know, pulling back from reality. And so they have a lot of cutscenes. You're going to sit there and you're going to play a cutscene. A cutscene is going to play for like 30 minutes before you can touch a controller. But you get story. You get a lot of story in that 30 minutes. So it kind of feels like the story is moving forward and you feel like you've gotten some context with it. With Death Stranding, one of the biggest problems is like, hey, I, you've got this huge map because you're going across the entire United States. Oh, my but God. But if I'm going to – I go to no. a, a fast travel. I have to go through four cutscenes just to get to a fast travel. Wow. You're not it's, you're not filling me with any sort of urge to go got, get this game. I'm wondering is and it is that it, is the reason why I am doing this review because it's a public service announcement. Lot, it is more of a fan service. I'm more doing a PSA. Look, I love Kojima. 
I love his work, but this game, it's just too, it's too much. It's too weird. It's too out of the norm. <laughs> it's, and for me to say that is very, very out, out of the norm for me because I'm normally like, this is a weird game. I love it, but this game is so crazy. I, it's like, I'm going to walk around for 10 hours carrying stuff on my back to bring from point A to point B. And the guy goes, thanks. Appreciate that. Here's a cat. You won a hat for doing that. Oh. Interesting. So, I, you know, I think I'm trying to I'm trying to think back, you know, when when you started your segment just now to, to, to mm-hmm. this point. And and I'm I'm really not sure that I understand what this game is at all. And I think that your summation that it is just crazy is apt because, yeah, I'm. I'm it is. I mean, there we, is we, really we, no. There's no. We the all game got, really doesn't make a lot of sense. And we all got psyched up for it for when E3 came out. It was right. like it was two years ago, Scungy, wasn't it? Like uh, we yeah, were doing like the whole. Two years ago, they did this huge reveal, and yeah. everybody was like, oh my God. And it he's looks. He's got a new game, and everybody's like, it's yeah. Norman Reedus, and everybody loves The Walking Dead. Right. And it looked visually no stunning. It looked like on. Norman Reedus, not 8 bit Norman Reedus. I mean, it was just like, wow, this looks beautiful. And, and it looked spooky because they had these little, like, slimy little footprints all over the place. It was like, ooh, wow, suspenseful. And then we get Hiking Simulator. I loved it. It was better the, the, than Cats. The, the, the I'll play it game. again and again. The mm. game visually is remarkable. I mean, for, from an artistic standpoint, the side like completely going away from the gameplay style can he do thundercats it is <laughs> stop <laughs> so all right no Let, let's let's get some brass tacks it's it's i'm assuming it's a first person or third person style it's a third person ad- action adventure exploration usps post service game oh okay and uh, is it is it one one scale? Can I explore the entire United States? You know, <laughs> yes, you can. Oh you God! Can basically, oh. it's it's a very it's a very large map. The one cool thing is one cool thing about this game is if you are playing the game, if somebody sits there and puts a ladder on the side of a cliff, all right, who would it stays in the game for everybody to notice it. And use that. So it's like, hey, I'm going to help out somebody by putting a ladder across this river and help them cross this river. So that is a really cool social aspect of the game that no matter what you do, every little thing you do in the game is going to help not only you, but somebody else. All that right. is remarkable. That's right, that, something that doesn't happen. Yeah, they can keep often. that. So wait, is, is it but, it's multiplayer, Scungy? It is not. All right. It's a single player game. Shared world. But it has that social aspect to it that something you do in the game will affect somebody else's game. Yeah, the mark you leave on civilization will reverberate through history, 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 history. Oh, okay. Exactly. Like you leave you leave a you leave a uh, a rope hanging from the side of a cliff that somebody can use that rope to climb. And off if the you cliff, fell right? down a cliff and you all your stuff fell off of you, like your rope, perhaps, or or well, you know your you know, spikes. What's funny about that, somebody could be a real prick <laughs> and put a ladder up to nowhere. So you go up the side of a cliff and climb this ladder, and it's like, oh look, there's nothing there, and you fall down and lose everything. Wow. So. All right, hold on. I'm I'm trying to piece this together real quick. You're telling me that I'm playing this single person game and I put a ladder up against a cliff, but then that's that ladder will show up on my friend's game? Yeah, absolutely. So it is sort of a shared world experience, even yeah, though it's so, single so player. I would play this and just put ladders to nowhere because <laughs> I would I would enjoy that, knowing I might never get to see the fruits of my labor, but to know that I ruined someone's day. Oh, that's that's priceless, Brian. Uh, absolutely, you can do that. And then you get likes if you leave something there and people like it. You get likes, which move your, which gives your character a little bit more. It's like the likes are really weird. It's like, <laughs> oh, your 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 character is now more likable, so you get a little bit more missions and whatnot. And and do you but get a hat? 
<laughs> and a hat. Yes, you get a hat. Or a, a, a extra, like, it was like, hey, you did this. And they literally gave me a hat with the company's name on it. I felt like, <laughs> hey, you're employee of the month. There you go. Wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, I got which, nothing. Yeah. yeah uh, what is the uh, price, price and price. platforms for this uh, <laughs> wondrous hiking simulator, <laughs> sir? <laughs> Oh my it's god! On the PlayStation. Uh, it's it's on the PlayStation Four only. Uh, look, thank God. If look, watch some video. If you want like a weird out of body experience, check it out. <laughs> if you got twenty hours to to blow, play it because then you'll get to something kind of decent. Because then you can get to some combat where you're fighting these other like factions that are around the world. But I mean, the first 10 hours is legitimately you walking around the world going, I need to bring this box to this guy. Wow. You, I, can, you can only make deliveries into the Appalachian area. So that way you meet, meet fallout people. Oh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> wow. Oh, I, wow. I'm, I'm at a loss of words. I, I don't, I don't know. And so, today's, Public service announcement was brought to you by Scungy and his pick of the week. That's why it took me so long to review this, because I was like, I don't know how to present this game. I really don't. I I am at a loss, and I'm reviewing it. Well, Scungy, the the people thank you. And we will take them to the people's court. I I am glad that they enjoyed it. All right. We're not going to fire you this week, Scungy. Yeah, go go enjoy some sports ball. Fantastic. Go Tigers. Coach out. Go Tigers. Oh, hold that Tyler. Oh, God. All right, guys. Stay tuned. When we get back, we're going to close out the show as we always do with This Week in Geek History. You're listening to The Week in Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. Friends, is your morning tea just not your cup of tea? Then try the tea blends of Viridian Tea Company. At Viridian Tea Company, they sell blends guaranteed to make you think outside the box. With such blends as Tea of the Necropolis, Quantum Mechanics, Spider Witch, and many more, your tea experience will be out of this world. Look for the blends at Tubby and Coo's Mid-City Bookshop, located at 631 North Carrollton, or on Etsy at Viridian Tea Company. Try Viridian Tea Company today. Your taste buds will thank you. You've waited for it, and now it's here. Get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt and help support our show. These 100% cotton black t-shirts with the Week in Geek Radio Show logo are going fast. So don't wait. Go to twigradio.com and order your shirt now. Just go to twigradio.com and get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt. 15 bucks up to XL, $17 for 2X and 3X. That's twigradio.com. Jezebel Johnston. Devil's Handmaid by Nancy Hansen is now an audiobook read for you by Brian Hell. It's a tale of a young girl from Tortuga who disguises herself as a boy and bluffs her way onto a pirate ship, chasing after her one true love, only to find adventure on the high seas. Jezebel Johnston Devil's Handmaid is available on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. Get your copy of Jezebel Johnston today. Welcome back to The Week in Geek. Don't forget, you can listen to previous episodes on the iHeartRadio app at The Week in Geek Radio Show. Here are your hosts, D Squared and Brian Held. Thank you, Sober Voice Guy. This is The Week in Geek, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now. I'm D Squared along with Brian Held. Now, as always, we want to strongly urge you to check out the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash The Week in Geek. Check out our website at twigradio.com. Follow us on Twitter at twigradio and the Instagram's The Week in Geek. Now, Brian, how can people listen to this lovely show? Well, if you missed any part of tonight's show or you want to catch your favorite part again, you can always find us on Spreaker.com or download Spreaker for your smartphone or tablet or also on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, the iHeartRadio app, and the post office. This week in geek history. We're sending you back to the future. Yes! Oh my God! This week in geek history is brought to you by Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmade by Nancy Hansen, read by Brian Held. Available on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. This week in geek history. Yes! All right, Brian, you know what? One thing before we uh, go, go to uh, 
this week in geek history. Yeah. I, I, we missed the story about uh, Doctor Strange Two loses its director. Yeah, I mean, so is there any truth that he went into like like a a, a black lighted room with posters and took a bunch of LSD and he's still trying to get out of that room? Is that what's going on? I mean, that's no. all. That, that's all Doctor Strange was it was like like do it on an LSD trip, right? Well, I mean, that's I guess what Jack Kirby was on originally <laughs> in the nineteen sixties when he created Doctor Strange. So, so it, this day in geek history. <laughs> The uh, former director of Doctor Strange uh, got lost in his own thoughts. Uh, there you go. Uh-huh. What's next, Brian? <laughs> All right. January 6, 2001. The very first episode of How It's Made airs on the Science Channel. That is a good show. I love it. It, show. it is very therapeutic, too, Oh, my man. God, yeah. Uh, just watching the stuff get made. Just Even door hinges, it's like, wow, that's cool. <laughs> Look, it, it's bad. Like, I love that show so much, I can't really watch it because I will just sit there and yeah, let it play. Sucked, yeah, you get sucked into it. Like, they had a crayon episode. I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> right? Wait, it's, it's something about those stupid videos you see sometimes, like, on Twitter and Facebook, where it's just like, it's... Things that OCD people gravitate to, where it's just like, I don't know, like like scraping soap, where you just make it, I don't know, it's yeah. just, you know, it's like that. No? Great show, great it, show. It is. Yeah, it is. Got, sometimes the Science Channel has it on like a 24-hour loop. It's just like, not cool. Not cool. <laughs> right. <laughs> January 7th, 1929. Buck Rogers, 2429 AD, and Tarzan, two of the first adventure comic strips, debut through Dell, a syndication company, leading the way for the popularization of science fiction, first in print, then in serialized films. Wow. Yes. The Buck Rogers. Yeah. It comes on uh, on cable every now and again, like 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 midnight. Oh, yeah. The, the like, when television that? show? Yeah, With yeah, Gil yeah. With Gerard? Yeah, right. Yeah. That's a great show. I love that show. Aaron Gray. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, right. I, I never understood the whole love boat theme to the uh, to to their uniforms on, on on the ship. Oh, that was come on, that was the seventies, man. I guess so. Yeah, you know, everything looked like that. <laughs> <sighs> Thankfully, we're not there anymore. Yeah. All right, January 9th, nineteen eighty three, sees the world's first video game championship in <gasps> Iowa by Twin what? Galaxies. An organization founded by Walter Day to record video game world records, and I actually, I oh. when I when I pulled this up, I, I looked it up. They're still around. They still keep track of video game records. You like, know what it is? They they're, they're actually they're with Armada. You know the Ernest Klein. That, uh, was it him, Ernest Klein? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the guy Armada. Who, yeah, they just had they had a, a, a. It's it's like Starfighter meets Armada. They they keep the records so that they know if they can put you in the space program. Oh, all right. Mm-hmm. You did the last Starfighter kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. gotcha. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> sure. The uh, it's like Buck Rogers and their uniforms. I, I, I convinced my my son that it was uh, Scoops Ahoy in space. He stopped for a second because it looks it looks like the Scoops Ahoy from Stranger Things. He's like, really? I'm like, gotcha. That's because everything old is new again, Dave. Amen, brother. <laughs> all What's right. Next? Oh, uh, January tenth, nineteen twenty-seven. The very first science fiction film in history, Metropolis, directed by Ooh. Fritz Lang, premieres in theaters. It took two years to shoot, cost more to produce than any other prior silent film, and it had um, the special effects was the Schuftman process. Schadenfreude <laughs> process? <laughs> yes. What it it involved shooting an actor through a hole in a silver back uh, mirror, right? That would reflect a matte painting. Mm. Okay. So it looked like he was on a larger set. I guess they're oh sneaky. Yeah, That's so smart. it was the the green screen of its time. It's it's like the, the World War Two stuff, like how they would move entire cities to avoid bombing, and and that they 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 would hire the people from Hollywood to create a fake army in uh, Britain to make make the Germans think they were going to go to the Pas de Calais. Interesting. Yeah, magic, magic, <laughs> Brian. Movie magic. <laughs> January eleventh, nineteen o two. Popular Mechanics magazine is published for the very first time. Ooh. At the beginning, it had five paying subscribers, and it will be purchased by a few hundred newsstand customers at a nickel a copy. And at the end, it had four. <laughs> right. All right. All right. Last, out here. last yeah. one real quick. Ah. January 12, 1997. Yeah. The heuristically programmed algorithmic computer, or HAL 9000, becomes <laughs> operational according to the 1968 film 2001, A Space Odyssey. All right, there you go. Yes. All right, 
I'm working on booking guests. I don't have anything to announce right now. Book away, sir. Till yeah. next time, keep your nerd flag raised high. G-F-L. Gets News Talk 99.5 WRNO-FM New Orleans anywhere on our free iHeartRadio app.